The most difficult part of making any corsets, stays, or bodies is the fitting. This becomes even more prohibitive when you're trying to fit a bodice from the most underappreciated, underrepresented, figurative black hole of costuming, the 17th century. One of the most common excuses I get from people about why they don't do the 17th century is that it's too hard and it has to fit perfectly. That's absolute bull. All you need is a little perseverance, some time, and maybe this video. In the middle to late part of the 17th century, up through the popularization of the mantua in the 1680s and 90s, feminine bodices were self-supporting, meaning they were the corsets of their time. Now let's be clear, they weren't corsets. Corsets refer to the feminine boned supportive garment from the romantic period through modern day. Stays are the corset's big sister and refer to the boned supportive garments of the 1680s through about the 1820s. And bodies are the bigger sister to the stays and refer to the boned supportive garments from the late Renaissance up through the 1680s. Ooh, it is dark and dreary out there today, y'all. I had to make some tea. Hopefully I can get all of this knocked out before we get our next thunderstorm. So what are we looking for in a good fit for bodies since they have a totally different structure from stays and corsets? First, we're looking for a very long conical torso. The curves of the Victorian era are definitely not in. The front should be smooth and flat. It should curve out a little at the bust and curve in gently over the belly. The neckline is very low and off the shoulder. We're also looking for a graduated waistline. The skirts break above the natural waist in the back, then move downward to slightly below the waist in the front. And like stays, we want a smooth wrinkle-free torso and no waist reduction. In this period, we are 100% faking the waist size using the elongated point in the center her front as well as a bum roll. It's an optical illusion. Most importantly, they need to be comfortable. Any pinching, pain, or discomfort is, like corsets and stays, an indication of a problem with the fit. And not because these articles of clothing were trying to oppress feminine presenting people. We don't need special garments for that. The government is doing just fine with that on their own. And it's raining. These bodices tend to be back closing and there's typically not a gap between the lacing. This is why people say it has to fit perfectly. But again, total BS. They didn't need a gap back then because one, they weren't making these themselves and they could just pay somebody to alter them. And two, because they wore them every day. And so most likely they would wear out or go out of style and need replacing way before their bodies changed enough to need alteration. We, on the other hand, are making these ourselves, have full-time jobs and families and obligations, and probably aren't going to be wearing these every day, especially in the 17th century because there are no events. So go ahead and put a gap in there and poo-poo anybody who tells you it's wrong. Don't let them intimidate you and tell them not to be intimidated. Let's enable the heck out of everyone. So I'm referencing two specific sources for this particular project. First being Patterns of Fashion 5, and the second being 17th Century Women's Dress Patterns, Book 2. Oh my god. I say this a lot, but it always bears repeating. I am a costumer, not a historian. My focus is showing how the thing is made and making it less intimidating, not necessarily giving a perfect historical context. So as always, take what I say with a grain of salt. I'm still learning, just like you are. My regular viewers probably already know this, but I approach corsetry and stays and body fitting in a four-stage fashion. The first stage is the paper and math stage. In this case, the paper and math stage involved scanning Janet Arnold's pattern of the extant garment using a flatbed scanner and then measuring the scale to determine the width of the waist. I then scaled up the image in paint to fit my personal waist measurement, the width only, not the length, before printing it out and testing it on my toile. That and the second stage, which is the first mock-up, have already been done in a separate video. So if you haven't seen my 17th century selkie gown, which is my wearable mock-up for this project, you can check that out after this video to see my first few modifications. It's linked in the description below. So the third stage is the second mock-up. Yeah, I know that's confusing. This is the one that takes the longest. You wanna cut it out using fabric that is similar weight to that of your final bodice and assemble it like it's the real deal, including all of the boning. This is so tedious, y'all, but 100% necessary. 
All right, so first try on didn't go so well. It was, as I suspected, way too big. So I went ahead and I just pulled in the center front by a full two inches. Unlike the wearable pre mock-up mock-up, I don't want to change the grain of the center front and the center back, if at all possible. I wanna keep those on the straight grain. So that's going to inform how I adjust the sizes from here on out. It's still too big. It is laced completely closed all the way down in the back and I'm still have a lot of extra here. I'm gonna take it in first in the back because I think proportion wise, when I made everything larger, the center front and the center back also got a lot larger and those are supposed to be much slimmer to get that line that they're going for. So we're gonna do that first because the magical rule for all corsetry, whether it's corsets, stays, or bodies, is that one little change affects the entire fit. So you have to do it a little at a time or else you'll go too far and have to backtrack. First order of business is to take in at the center back. I removed some of the excess boning and folded the edge in by a full inch on each side before re-sewing on my lacing strip. That made a huge difference. There's a much better gap in the back and it's not puckering like it was before. However, I, uh, ripped it while I was lacing. I should have known better. You really don't want to baste your lacing strips on. You want to do the full sew, but that's what I did. Still going to have to make some adjustments, but I'm starting to get frustrated. And that tells me that this is probably enough for today. We're going to reconvene tomorrow and see if we can improve it a little bit more. I decided to try to fix the neckline by taking in a dart in the bust. I've been exceptionally frustrated with this make and I've actually had to put it up for a couple of days. It does not look the way that it's supposed to look. Part of it is my fault because I think I've been approaching this make the way a kid approaches drawing a tree. They draw what they think a tree should look like and not necessarily what a tree actually looks like. And I think I've been doing the same with this. I've sort of been going along and making tweaks and stuff without really referencing my actual source material and really taking the time to look at everything and figure out what's happening. So let's talk about all of the problems and then we'll try and fix them. The first major thing is it's pinching me in the back at the waist. Something is wrong there. Either the tabs are not high enough or it's too tight in the back, which I think is partially part of the problem. I also do not feel supported in the front and it is giving me the wrong silhouette. I have got a very not flat front. I need to add the busk to this. When I broke the busk to my yellow 17th century stays or bodies, I wore them all day and I was getting extreme back pain because my busk was broken. I think that might be part of the reason why my back hurts. Secondly, the bottom point is way too wide and the tabs are too long. When I enlarge the pattern, I had to enlarge it widthwise because this was made for a very small person. That has also proportionately increased the width of everything, including the front point. This slit here, I cut intentionally because I was thinking that was the issue. I'm going to sew these back up and then I'm going to go ahead and change the front waistline to better reflect the proportions of the original garment. Next, it's too big at the top of the back. This person was small with very broad shoulders. The reason why I'm not having an issue in the bottom, but I'm having an issue on the top is because I took it on that curved seam and that stops right under the arm. So my issue is specifically on the top back. So I'm gonna have to take in a dart like I did with the center front, unlike my pre-mock-up wearable mock-up where I just took it in in the center back. We want the center back to be perfectly on grain. Finally, this seam looks horrible. It looks so bad. It's all bunchy and weird and wonky. And I could not sew it on the machine properly with the bones in, which is what I was attempting to do, which was stupid. So I am going to take this part and hand sew it. All right, now we have our plan. Let's go take care of those and then we'll see where we're at after that. The tricksy bit here is that we need to take the back in above the curved seam. So I started right above the top of that seam and pinched out two full boning channels at that point. This will take it in about three quarters of an inch on each side. I used a very dense zigzag stitch on the machine to stitch the random tab back together. Note that this is much easier if you take out all the boning, but I'm a lazy snoofball and could not be bothered. It was a struggle. 
Okay, as much as I don't want to, I'm gonna hand stitch the curved seam back together. But before I do that, I'm gonna stick in the busk pocket. Since this excess fabric is conveniently here for my alterations, I'll use this as a base for my busk pocket. I've simply grabbed a strip of muslin ripped on grain and will sew it to the seam allowance just barely wide enough for the busk to fit through. I'm using a 14 inch busk from Red Threaded, the same one I use for my Regency stays. Note that this is a little too short for these particular bodies. I like to make my own, but the quest for some good hardwood that is just the right thickness has proved extremely difficult. We'll see what I end up doing for the real deal. Okay, enough stalling jacks, deal with that curved seam. One of the best things you can do for yourself when fitting any kind of corsetry is this. Filming yourself just slowly rotating in your mock-up. Looking through the lens gives you more objectivity and a more accurate visual than looking at yourself in the mirror. Filming on your phone works totally fine, but upload it onto your computer so you can look at it in larger resolutions. You'll thank me later. Those tiny little changes made a huge difference. I'm gonna have to make the sleeve straps a little bit longer since I took it in a full two inches in the back. It's a little bit tight on my arms right now, although I think that's how it's supposed to be. The only thing I haven't changed yet is the center front point. I wanna make sure that I have all of my size adjustment changes done first before I mess with that. I am still feeling a little under supported in the side bust. That might be because I don't have enough boning in there. I may switch and use thicker boning there and use some extra interfacing. Haven't decided yet. What I am gonna do, which is the most important thing that you do when you're mocking up any kind of course of tree is wear it for a bit. I'm gonna punts around the house, I'm gonna eat lunch, I'm gonna do some chores, I'm gonna do a little writing, and we're gonna see how I feel in an hour or two. And if I feel as comfortable as I am now, then we can go ahead and modify the front. All right, signing off. I still felt really unsupported, so I decided to add a little extra fabric to the side bust. This is a modification I've done on many of my stays and bodies because unfortunately, like modern patterns, most extant garments weren't made for those of us who are better endowed. If you're a D cup or larger, this is a handy trick to keep in your back pocket. Essentially, I'm just placing a piece of fabric here at the curve willy nilly, and I'll tuck it under while on my body until it's comfortable. No measuring, no need to stress yourself out with numbers. Ooh, sneak peek at the petticoat. At this point in the fitting process, you should be trying these things on over your petticoats, over your under petticoats, over your hip supports to make sure that everything is working right with the garments you're going to be wearing with the final gown. Now, I am going to have a full dedicated video on how to make the petticoat as well as how to actually build these bodies. And once everything is built, then we're going to turn this dress on its head and make it a dark unicorn costume complete with fancy horn and over gown and lots of sparkles. The first thing of note is with the petticoat on, I sort of tucked under the weird part of the bodies here that was too wide until I got the shape that I like. I'm pretty happy with this. So we can go ahead and mark this with some friction pen so that we can actually get it cut. Putting in the little side patch helped immensely. So this strap for some reason is going over my shoulder instead of across my shoulder. I can't figure out if that's because I'm crooked, which I am, or if it's, you know, just the angle of this back piece versus this back piece. We'll figure that out later. This strap is all right. It's still just a little loose. I got to fiddle with it. Now with these changes made, I'm going to wear this for a little bit and see how I'm feeling comfort wise for the boning that's poking me in the back. Ugh. Once I've gotten a good idea of where we're at, then we'll make any changes necessary and do yet another try on. Also, I am so sorry if I look more dead than usual. <laughs> I'm totally wrecked today. It's because my fire alarm went off at 3.30 this morning for no apparent reason. It went off like for about 15 seconds and enough for me to fly out of bed and freak the heck out. Turns out the dude downstairs had a leak and that's why my fire alarm went off. Love living in an apartment. Let's wear this thing for a little bit and see how she does. 
I was getting a lot of discomfort in the back and when reviewing this footage, I noticed that the lacing strip is crooked. So I went ahead and fixed this. Okay, the scary part, cutting the front. Note that this is going to make my bodies more like the one at the V&A instead of the one from the Fashion Museum in Bath, but I think it's gonna be way more flattering. Thank you so much to all of my supporters over on Kofi Gold Stars for every single one of you. I could not maintain this channel without you and I appreciate you so much much. If you find this video helpful and would like to buy me a coffee, I've linked to my page below. What do you, the viewers at home, think? Was it a good idea to change the design of the center front? Or should I have stuck to the design of the original Lexton garment? Alrighty friends, still not perfect in the back, but I think I'm happy enough with it that we can go ahead and transfer all of our markings to the pattern and get this cut out of the real interlining. I hate this part, so let's just rip the bandaid off and get her done. Cue destruction montage. I'd say we're at about 70% structural completion at this point. I do have a couple of issues. First, it's up too high, but that's because I cut my center front a little bit longer than it was on the previous mock-up. I just wanted to double check and make sure everything was okay. You can always take fabric off. You can't always put fabric back on. It's also still sticking out in the back. Now I've done a little bit more reading and I do think that this is a common issue in this particular style. And once I have the binding on, that should help a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as is. I, I don't wanna take it in anymore in the back because I am definitely at capacity as far as movement goes. But otherwise, it looks really good. It's very smooth. There's no wrinkling. It's quite comfortable. I'm not getting the pinching in the back that I was getting before. So that's very good. So other than cutting up this little piece, I think we're actually good to start the long and arduous task of putting this together for reals. And y'all, that feels pretty good. Okay, that's where we're going to stop it for today. And if you'd like to learn more about fitting corsets, stays, or bodies, you can check out this video here on the screen. Thank you so much for watching. I love y'all and I'll catch you in my next video. And of course, now the rain stops.